Hey Eurovision fans, we have the 12 songs for the final of Melody Festival and that's Sweden's national final. I'm going to listen and react to all 12 of the live performances and we're going to see who could potentially win and be the host entry this year in Malmö, Sweden. So let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. Now, this isn't normally a video that I do and I was kind of thinking to myself, why don't I do like a final Mel Fest review? And the reason for it is that I remember another creator a couple of years ago got a copyright strike from showing an SVT video. But recently I've been seeing a lot more people reacting to them and it doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. And you know, I really, really love Melody Festival. And I've been doing my reactions after each semi-final. So I'm going to go through all 12 of the performances and give you my reaction to what's happening on stage. Of course, I've already given you my initial reactions in those videos. I didn't do one for Heat 5 because I think I'm just going to replace it with this video instead. Things are crazy right now. I've got so much work going on. I'm trying to do odds videos and Eurovision scoreboard videos and review every song. I'm working like crazy from dusk till dawn. I will get it all done. For the sake of time and also my sanity, I am not going to fight the copyright on this video. I'm going to play the original audio. The record companies are going to take all the ad revenue for this video. So I'm not going to make any revenue from this video. So if you like these type of national final videos and you want me to keep doing them, please consider supporting the channel. Even just subscribing really helps me out. It's free. It helps me when I'm looking for sponsors. You can also join my Instagram. Again, that helps me looking for sponsors. I have a Patreon. You can support me on Buy Me Coffee or PayPal. Or if you don't want to do any of that, just watch another video that is monetized and I can get the ad revenue from that instead. So when you finish watching this, just go watch another video. And thank you to everyone who does already support me in all those various ways. Okay, we've got 12 songs. I'm going to go by the official running order that they're using for Melody Festival. Now, I'm presuming I can play all the original audio and videos. Usually, if you let them take all the money, they let you play the song. <laughs> Sometimes they block you anyway, but it's pretty rare. So I'm pretty confident I can show everything. So let's start off with Maria Sir. I believe that she qualified second in Heat 1. She is, I think she's 19. She's originally from Ukraine. Real superstar. Okay, this is Maria Sir, one of our secret band. Melody no more. Eh. Let's see how many of the same songwriters are for each song. Sure, I love the way she did that R. That was very spicy. Beautiful opening shot. She's got a lot of poise beyond her years. This is a gorgeous opening. A little bit reminiscent of Marcus and Martinez last year, Air. Great faceography. She's a real natural. This is a great opening song, bringing the energy. You can see the little wands waving, they need to fix that for the final because it breaks the mood. Love this diamond cutting visual theme. And I heard her mic feed, she's an exceptional singer. Come up to the pop top, right build up of anticipation. Gonna get like a mini first course, we don't get the full thing. And we actually see that diamond, this diamond heist feel. Beautiful image, I love that, it's stunning. Again, get rid of the waving flags though, please. Another one, so cool. This is what Sweden does so well, this cinematography. And Maria's really got that performance ability. I think this is a stronger part of the song now. This beat coming in. And that slashing lines. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. Love this color concept as well. These like dark navies, blacks. Yeah, I like the choreography as well. It's intense, kind of badass, uh, standoffish. Because the, the lyrics are kind of fighty. It's like, you know, appreciate me. She's got, look at just every part of her body. The way she's squatting down, the way she's moving every part of her body. Really high standard. Okay, come into the, I can't remember the bridge now. Yeah, it's not a very strong bridge. Yeah, it's quite a standard bridge, isn't it? it? Does show off her voice though. I do feel like her performance ability is higher than last year. Yeah, lovely. I think she wanted to have a break dance and they didn't allow it. So the dancers are really bringing this great energy around her. 
Oh, that's a great note. Lovely coming down with her and coming back to those tableaus again. Really love that. She's amazing. Love the, the still images at the start of the second verse where we go to that image and then we switch on. That's a real wow moment for me. Love the color palette. Love this theme of diamond heist, diamond cutting. For me, she is an A-plus performer. She's incredible, really exciting. She's lovely, she's beautiful smile. She's got a great stage present, great singer. She looks great, like I said, she's using all of her body. She's just a natural on stage. The song for me is just not at her level. It's good, it's fine. I'll download it, I'll listen to it. It's just not as good as she is, basically. And I feel like you only get to win Melody Festival on once, most of the time. You know, Lorien won twice, Charlotte Pirelli won twice, I'm sure others have as well. Generally though, you, uh, Carola won twice as well. Generally you only get to win once though, and you only get to go to Eurovision once. So I want her to go with something really top class that can do really, really well. I just feel like the song is just a bit too generic. It's not at her level. I want her to come back with her masterpiece song and win with that. I think the producers are kind of recognizing that and they're putting her first because they probably want to save her for later. Also just knowing that the song is not massively competitive because she elevates it, but really, I think it's a pretty basic song. Next up we have Jay Smith, Back to My Roots. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you will have seen I was slightly uh, bemused by this new runoff vote system, which I'm sure caused a lot of controversy in Sweden. Basically the two Heat 5 songs won. My theory is because it's recency bias. People saw that performance 10 minutes ago and it didn't qualify and now all of a sudden they have a second chance to put it in as opposed to a song that they saw four weeks ago. It's, <laughs> it's very obvious in hindsight. This song was actually rejected last year. So this applied for Melody Festival in 2023. It was rejected. I don't even know if they revamped it. I'm not sure. Jay Smith, Back to My Roots, one and on my secret bank. I did watch some of this, I gotta admit. I didn't think it was gonna qualify, so I skipped parts of it. So this is my full, first full watch. Okay, so it's got like a kind of different feel. It's like a little bit of country rock or something. Oh, and a big like back to my roots board behind. Like, it's fine. Like, we're kind of... I don't think it's wow. I don't think it's gonna be wow. It's just got a different feel though. It's kind of like a country sound. So he's gonna stand out a little bit. Yeah, it's very safe. I think it's like a solid song. Um, just really unspecial, like desperately unspecial, but nice. Um, but I, there's nothing about this that's like new or innovative. He's singing it well, they're performing it well. And uh, the staging is kind of boring. It's some standing in front of a sign. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to come last in the final. Uh, unless the kind of, I think this did well with the older generations and the vote, the age group votes. Like the song isn't terrible at all. Yeah, I, I just think it's the weakest song in the final. But like there's a pleasantness to it, you can get a bit of a toe tap on. And the breakdown is very predictable, it's into a, like a clap. I do think this makes Maria look good though, because she has something that's a little bit more modern, exciting, and then you have the contrast of this, which is like kind of dated and a bit boring. So it makes Maria look good in hindsight. Yeah, staging wise, it's just no concept. It's just kind of rocking out, and you need a better song if you're gonna do something that simple. I get it though, this staging is organic to the song. Like, it makes sense. I don't know what they could have done otherwise, but. Yeah, like at the end of the day, this song didn't even make the top 28 last year. Uh, so the fact that they even made the final is good. Yeah, that's just not doing anything for me. I think that'll probably, I think that's my last place from the 12. I did my scoreboard out earlier. Okay, third up we have Lisa Ajax, and she is an awful liar, one of them is secret bang. Melody number fem. Fix it, so David Lindgren wrote this, and Victor Krona, who represented uh, Estonia. Our first beautiful classic ballad. Her mic feed is fantastic. Her voice is exceptionally strong. Yeah, she's got really great control. She's a good connection with the camera as well. I love showing off the baby bump as well. 
we got some interpretive dancing. A uh, little bit of a Eurovision cliche, but never mind. This is catchy. I had this in my head after the first lesson. And the, the color palette's cool. This purple feels like she's on a different planet with that big crystal. Vocal strong there. Just maybe a little bit too standard, but definitely one of the stronger other songs in the middle. I like the lyrical concept as well, this thought of kind of uh, deluding yourself, you know, saying, oh, I'm actually over this person when you're not. No, I like that, it's cool. You don't expect good lyrics in Melody Festival, and so it's nice when you get it. Oh, we got a little bit of interaction with the dancer behind her. It's just a little bit too dated in the staging. The staging feels like something from the, no the tens. Yeah, like it's a solid final filler. This is very deserving of being the final in my opinion. It's just not competitive. Might get like a 12 or a 10 for some of the juries though. Okay, I like some of the choreo with the back dancers there. That's a bit unusual. That song, it still looks pretty. One of the best singers though in the final, I think. I think that's hard to disagree with. And I wish her well with her baby. Now we have song number four. This is Smash Into Pieces saying Heroes Are Calling. They came third last year. I feel like SVT are very keen on them coming back because they kind of make it look like the final is not all pop. When really, this is basically a pop song. One number secret band. Like when you look at the songwriters, Jimmy Thornfeld is there, you know, it's a lot of the same songwriters from all the pop songs. Nice one, something different though. I do like it visually, it's very different. And his vocal as well. This kind of like apocalyptic feel, very military as well. But you can still see he's doing the Melody Festival and movements. It's, it's rock for Melody of Festival. I still like it, I'm not criticizing, I just like, <laughs> they're just observations. His vocal song, it's a unique vocal, it sounds different, a little bit like Linkin Park. And the drum is nice as well, a little bit having, different having that heavy drum in the song. And we get this like Terminator style backdrop, AI taking over. And here's the main hook. Love those red lasers, really cool. Really, really lovely sound, that's very catchy. Same thing they had last year, we had like a chorus and then that instrumental post chorus. So same structure to the song. Give me a little bit of Dune here. And I like the involvement of the other members of the band. But they're not playing the guitar, so they got some free time. Yeah, great energy from everyone on stage. Really using all the space. Both these sounds pretty solid. I really like the visuals. That it's just so different from everybody else. Future, dystopia, a bit more anger in it. Okay, mix up now into the final third. The song lyrics are slightly unusual. I'm not sure what heroes they're referencing. Okay, mix up here. And we get this cool visual of like a mechatron behind him with a laser pointed at him. This blue laser, blue, red, black. And this image of the drummer kind of behind the screen. It's cool. It stands out. It's well choreographed. Like there's a lot of organization going on here. Yeah, like I think I would be very happy if this won. I don't know if it's gonna win. It feels like the song is just a tiny bit weaker than last year, but the visual package is unique. Their sound is unique. They kind of stand out. Look, this is a pop song. It's a pop song with guitars. <laughs> this is like you take a pop song who maybe was written for somebody else, add a guitar in, add that instrumental in, and then you get a smash into pieces melody festival and song. You know, there's some performance towards the camera, the way he moves. <laughs> it's a wolf and lamb's clothing. 
I have no problem with that. I like the variety. I like that it feels different visually and the feel, and it's got a little bit more anger behind it, the slight military feel. These visuals, more futuristic, a bit more computer game. Yeah, I'd be very happy if the one, I think fourth in the running order is very early to win. I can't think of a song recently that won from that far back. I think most of the time the Melody Fist and Wall and Winner is around 10th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Maybe someone's won from 7th a couple of times, but it's, I don't think it's just so much that the, the earlier songs are out of it. I think it's more that the producers put the songs that are going to win towards the end. Uh, I think if they put the best song in fourth, it could win. I don't know if this is the strongest package, but I'd be, I'd be happy if it's surprised. This is song number five. It's Kazi Opea singing Give My Heart a Break. One on my secret band. Kazi Opea wrote. She was one of the writers on Tattoo last year. Beautiful that opening with the keyhole. Like she's a little nymph or something. Her styling is fantastic. It reminded me of Betsy Johnson, the fashion designer. Lovely, light, bouncy feel. This was another contender to open the show, I think. Great performance style. She's very confident. She's got great connection with the camera. That little boop. Love it. Visually, this is the most joyful, very mirthful. She's, she's pretty decent vocally. She's not wow, but she's solid. Lovely, lovely big strong beat coming out and this flower on the floor is lovely. The costumes are so wild and wacky. I kind of love them though. I love this bit now walking along the stem. So just having this interactive, a little bit of thought into the staging. Lyrically, I'm not picking out anything particularly strong. Lovely beat though. Beautiful imagery in the back. She's underwater now. The dancers are, yeah, very Willy Wonka. Gay Willy Wonka. Had a bit of turtle floating by her there. Some nice little simple shimmy dancing there. Okay, a little bit of a breakdown here. Into a climax, yeah, Lily's hands are fabulous. So charming, really whimsical. Fits in with her fun, carefree, styling this pop of yellows fantastic love that big beautiful pink and yellows so job i think the eight three to nine year olds are going to give this 12 points yeah really really lovely the song's got this lovely carefree 90s feel to it and the ending again with the keyhole Really, really pretty. Some, I think one of my favorite visual performances. Such a clear color palette and theme and kind of feel. The mood of it is really joyful and carefree. And just that also kind of feeling like she's like a little nymph or dwarf. Like she's in this tiny keyhole. She's walking along a flat. Like she's almost like this tiny fairy girl. Uh, I really like that. I think it's really cute. Okay, next up we have Annika Vicky Halder. What song is this? Is this number seven? No, one song number six. We're around halfway through. Annika, one and number secret bang. This is another song that I've only listened to once before. I actually don't recognize that many of the songwriters, so interesting to see some new names. Her performance style feels like a little bit overdone. I don't know if her facial expressions are very believable. Her voice is very pretty. It just feels like the acting is fake. Styling's very pretty though, I love I love her dress. I like these crystalline structures of the light bouncing off them, that's cool. And when they kind of pow, it does look impactful. She's giving good dancing energy now, I like this movement. Okay, I'm, I'm buying her performance more now in this part. I remember there being a really pretty bit towards the end. Hopefully I remember that right. The chorus is just lacking a kind of catchiness for me. Good, better energy there though. This is the bit I remember. Yeah, this is nice. That's really, really lovely. I like that part a lot. A little bit short though. Lyrically, this is giving me zilch. 
Ooh, into a key change. I forgot there's a key change. Yeah, it's 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 a bit generic. I would actually see this struggling to qualify. If Sweden had to qualify, I think this would struggle. It's so solid. Uh, it's just got nothing really super special to it. That bit, that 15 or so seconds is really pretty, but otherwise it's just, yeah. Okay, next up we got Marcus and Martina singing Unforgettable. They are originally from Norway, but this is their second European Melody Festival. Their song last year, Air, was my favorite. And they're back now with their song Unforgettable, one in our secret band. Very strong collection of songwriters. Beautiful, mysterious opening where you're not getting the full picture, it's obscured. That card are really amazing. Looks stunning. And this red lighting, very artistic. This is Sasha Jean Baptiste, I'm guessing. Yeah, that card are very futuristic. A little bit of Matrix, a little bit of Terminator. They've got great dancing ability. One sings, the other dances. It's a clever strategy. Giving a chance to catch their breath. They're very good with giving face as well, serving face. The font behind there I think is a little bit too dated. But that line coming down is fantastic. Love that 1990 angle they go for. We get the dancers coming in now. Full on matrix. You can see one singing, the other smizing. Love it. They're very, very, very strong performers. Love this color palette of aquas and, and blood orange. Really cool. Great use of lights on their face. Feels like we're in a music video, but we're not getting too immersed. It doesn't feel so detached as Benjamin Grosso. Sound-wise, it's solid. I don't think it's as wow as air. They've got great presence, like right next to the camera, they know how to perform. It's super flashy, super slick, lacking soul, I think, a little bit. Choreographed to the T. This is a nice part now, this synthy course. I don't think the course is super catchy. Nice modem sounding noise there for the breakdown. Kind of building up to this fan thing. Same thing they did last year with the sudden end. Yeah, look, for me, this staging is wow. This is the best staging for me of the whole contest. Song-wise, I don't think it's the best song. I think the song is ironically kind of forgettable. I think the verses are actually much stronger, but when we get to the chorus, I had to listen to this like four or five times before I could remember the chorus. And I'm not saying that to like make a lame joke about thing. I genuinely couldn't remember the chorus as opposed to some of the other songs, which I picked it up straight away. Still really enjoy the whole performance though. Super easy to sit through, extremely entertaining. Just showing that there is more to a performance than the song. Then the way they're serving, they're kind of like pouting, posing into the camera, they're dancing. I like their costumes. The dancers are very over the top. The color palette of these aquas with this blood red, love all that. So I'm totally entertained throughout the whole thing, but I don't leave it going, oh my God, I have to download that song because it's stuck in my head. I'm thinking, I can't remember the song. <laughs> I just remember the amazing staging but people vote for staging. This really feels to me like Benjamin and Grosso dance you off. Super high jury score. People at home just aren't connecting with it. That's the vibe it's giving to me. It feels like the follow-up to that song. They're still the favorites though, so they might win. I'm gonna power through. I'm feeling tired, but I'm gonna power through. We've got daughter saying, it's not easy to write your love song. One on number secret bank. Huge fan of daughter. I love Bulletproof in 2020. This is written by her and her partner, Dino. It's not easy to write a love song. Voice sounds very lovely at the start. The very central performance. She's touching herself a lot, you'll see here. 
quite sexy on the piano. Styling is beautiful. I love this torn up top that she's wearing. And this arch back. Yeah, this feels quite sexual to me, which I don't mind. It doesn't really pair lyrically. It feels a little bit of a mismatch. It does feel unique. She's kind of on this piano island. Um, and she's trying, she's giving a lot into the performance. I think this is gonna get a couple of twelves from the jury because it sounds different from the other songs. It's like this kind of more unique ballad. Beat coming in. Some nice production there, like that, that electronic sound behind. She's got a bit of an interaction on the screen as well. Vocals going a tiny bit off on this second verse. And really staging, it's just her and a piano. There's not too much exciting stuff. She's having to pull the whole thing off on her own. Yeah, I just think some of the choreography just doesn't match with what she's singing about. You know, the hand on the tummy, I just don't get the reference. Now, she was sick during this performance, so she's going to be stronger vocally in the final. Lovely violins as well, and flurry at the end. Back onto the piano for the finale. Great use of the lights to give this climax. Vocally very strong climax. It's very epic. It's got a real big epic feel at the end. Look, it's it's not my favorite of her songs, but I am downloading this. I have downloaded this. I'm listening to it. I, I, I can't see it winning. Even if she performs a flawless vocal, which I think is gonna be difficult, it's gonna be easier. I think her vocals will be better in the final because she won't be sick. Even with that, I think it's gonna be tough for this to win. It's interesting. I think it's a little bit different than a normal melody festival and song. So I appreciate the kind of, it feels like a little bit risky in the performance around the piano and her being on her own and the way the song is written. But yeah, it's just not getting the, some of the elements just aren't clicking with me. I need to take a break. My throat's really dry. I feel so tired, I'm gonna die. Okay, let's take a little bit of a break here and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back from my final part of Melody Festival. I need to hurry up because it's getting very dark. I'm gonna lose light. Next up, we have Medina singing Que Sera. One and a my secret band. This is the only song in Swedish in the final. Swedish and Spanish. Kind of fun starting with that bike coming out. I'm surprised that this didn't open the final because it's a real party song. I think they opened last year though, so maybe they wanted to give them a better running order. Real party song. Sounds like a football anthem. Different energy from everyone else. Kind of filling the Samir and Vokter. <laughs> Vokter. <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> filling that niche for this year. Nice fun though, a little bit of fun choreography. Switch your brain off. It's, it's joyful. I think this would be a great host entry. I don't think it's gonna win, but it's got that welcoming host party feel. I like that kazoo as well. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Like very fun, nice dancey, summer feel. I think this is actually stronger than their song last year. I prefer this. Yo, know, a little bit of cute choreography. They're not the strongest dancers in the world. I like it. It's charming. It's endearing. It's nice energy bop. We get the bike back again. Lyrically, you know, case there are what will be, will be. I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's gonna uh, give anyone an epiphany. Nice breakdowns here, though. Dance break. Like, it's a fun performance. And the key change, I don't know. It does feel different from everyone else. It's, got, it's just got an anthemic feel. Big explosion at the end. Yeah, look, I like this entry. Again, I would like it if it won. I don't think it's gonna win. Sweden has a center song in Swedish since 1998, I think. Basically the last time they have to. I don't think that's the performance that gets Swedish people to break the mold and send a song in Swedish. 
It's fun though, I'd like to see them do well. Again, another person like Maria Sir, who I think could potentially represent Sweden in the future, but it's gotta be their best song. But they give a different vibe, they give a different energy. Everyone else is giving like a very similar niche and they just feel like they're doing something slightly different, kind of similar to Samar and Victor. But Simon Victor didn't make the final this year, so Medina have that kind of feel to themselves. Next up, we got Liamu Sing Dragon. If you follow me on Twitter, you may know that I might have a slight addiction to this song. Wanna know my secret bank? Beautiful starting. That lovely soft piano. Love the lighting on him as well. This gorgeous glow appearing behind him. Vocals sound really nice. He's got great performance quality. He's been here before. He's experienced. We see these pillars, great cinematography, building suspense. I love this, giving us a little bit of the airbender. Very interactive now with the graphics. With this explosion on the floor. So it's very thought out. There's a lot of ideas here. Creativity. I love this chorus. <laughs> and the fire, amazing. And his falsetto harmonizing on the backing track. Beautiful. Great energy. He's written the song himself. He feels it. Love that image of the dragon flashing up behind him. Loads of cool ideas here. That little smile, great connection with the camera, building it. That side angle is really beautiful, where he looks to the side as well. Gorgeous. I think it's a little bit more bounce now, one little bit more energy in the final. These four pillars though with the flames is really, really cool and they can bring that to Malmo. Yeah, cool. Timing with the fire lyric in the song. This performance is really great. Vocal sound great. And this timing of the thing, it's so well rehearsed. I'm trying really hard not to sing along. <laughs> I love this song so much. That falsetto is so pretty. He's meant to have a trick now. I believe in this, it doesn't work. He's meant to have a flame in his hand. He takes the fire and it didn't work. This is him looking at his hand going, oh crap. He handles it so well though, look at that, you don't even notice. A little bit off there vocally, but it'll sound better in the final. And I like that smile. Lovely, and his flames are so dramatic, exciting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much. Brilliant. Oh my god. Okay. So this is what I tune into Melody Festival and for. Now I know lots of people think the song is really basic and I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm not saying it's not basic, but for some reason this just ticks all the boxes in my brain. I love this melody. It's so catchy to me. I really love the production on the song. I love the way he's written it. I think his vocal ad libs are perfect. This is exactly how I want vocal ad-libs and complimentary backing track in a song. I like these written in himself. Look, lyrically, this is the bit where he says, I spread my wings and fly. I'm just going to forget that that exists because it's awful. But the rest of the lyrics I kind of like. It's fighting his own demons, which he kind of talked about a little bit about in bluffing and making this metaphor with a dragon. When a song is going to be kind of like more standard pop, I like if it has a fun metaphor in it. So I like this thing of a dragon. Let me turn the light off. So I was wondering why it was making me so dark. It's got, that light makes it darker for some reason. I like it when these songs have that fun theme, like a dragon, or they're making some focus for the metaphors. And then it matches with the staging. We're kind of getting this fantasy dark ninja theme. His styling is really cool. We have the four fire pillars, which he switches on as he moves around. Great interaction when he says fire and they flame up. We have the flames at the front. He, he's meant to have a party trick coming into the bridge, I think, where he has a flame in his palm and it was meant to like light and fire and I don't know, maybe he blows it out or he shows the fire, I'm not sure. Because he does an interactive thing where he reaches to the flame on the LED and then it's meant to be in his hand. It didn't work and to be honest, I didn't even notice 
in the semi-finals. I only found out later because somebody told me and then I watched back and you can see this like slight second of disappointment in his face when he realized that hasn't worked. He, go he immediately recovers. No, like so professional. And then he walks forward and then he gives that little smile, just kind of acknowledging, okay, the trick didn't work. I'm just gonna go with this energy. Really, really fantastic. He pulled it together and still managed to automatically qualify. I really, really, I just, I just love this song. So I love this package. This is this slick coolness that I love that Sweden does when they have these fantastic staging with fantasy, immersive, colorful, expensive looking visuals. But then it's not that lights thing that we've had with Benjamin and Grosso and Marcus and Martinez twice and Robin Banks. It just feels like a different type of stage show. So it just feels a little bit more unique to me. I love that bit where he's walking the side angle. That looks so beautiful. Those oranges, browns and reds. And then he gives that look to the camera. There's so many like really cool things here that look like they're from a movie. I've had this song on repeat. The second that the song's dropped, I literally listened to this song like 10 times in a row. I love it. I get why other people don't. Something in my brain, it just, I love how it sounds. This is what I want my Melfest songs to sound like. No surprise that this is my winner. <laughs> Melody Festival 2024. I don't know if it's gonna win. We'll talk about the odds at the end. Maybe it's got a little bit of a chance. This is my favorite song from the Amu. I actually prefer this over Bluffing, which was my number one also in 2022. But I can see how this is a little bit, got a little bit more of a shot. It feels more open. It's in the Magic 10 slot, which a lot of the recent winners have been slot number 10. So maybe this is the producer saying, hey, Liamu, this is your turn. He's ready, he performs it so well. I love the, his ability to recover from a mistake. Vocally, kind of there, not perfect. The falsetto accompaniment in the chorus is the backing track. So that bit will be okay. But yeah, some of his notes just be, need to be a little bit cleaner. Verses are perfect, chorus, not there yet. He needs to nail that to get the jury votes in the final. Next up, we have Jacqueline, and she's saying effortless. What an amazing bang. Melody number one, text and music. Now this is a Chasse Jean Baptiste staging. Very cool, very red and black. Great starting beat, engaging right from the start, and that opening tableau, her touching this light box. The red line closing on her. Very music video. Very slick. The feathers are gorgeous on her too. Vocals are okay, not perfect. She's giving great energy though. That Papa Boo, I'm so obsessed. Those dancers appearing out of nowhere, amazing. I really like the dancer styling as well. Call the police because you stole my heart is a great line. And the dancing, look, look at these dancers choreography with their legs, really interesting. That's new choreography for Malfest. Yeah, really great accessible beats. Nothing massively risky in the song, very solid. Beautiful red line, she loves her reds and black. And she uses them very well, in fairness, it looks great. I like how the dancers all have different choreographies while they're not all doing the same thing. It just makes it look more expensive. I can see this winning now. I think this is very high quality. Epiphany in the backseat of your car is a very spicy lyric. Getting a bit of a dance break in, lovely. Great use of the lights on the floor. This is Sasha's artistry. And that tableau, I love it with the use, of, the use of legs in the choreography is fantastic. And that still image, really pretty. This is a real wild performance. And that slow head turn. There's so many cool ideas here. Really, really great. Song is great as well. It's not the most wild thing in the package. Nice bit of vocals at the end. Like that small epiphany dance there, that's cute as well. Nice notes. Yeah, nice ending. And the feathers as well. 
Really great, and a nice, nice instrumental outro. Yeah, this is this is such a solid package. Like, really, let me go for a little bit. It just looks so cool and beautiful in the editorial. This is very much like Sweden Peak, and this is Sasha Jean Baptiste. Just oh, the organization, the artistry, just these small things, the way she's styled those feathers, the way that they go against the red backdrop, the line coming in, the dancers with their still moments with the legs, the choreography with the legs. Jacqueline just giving really great energy, getting low throughout the whole thing. The song is good. I think the package probably exceeds it a little bit. This does feel like the type of thing that's, it's the quality feel of Sweden in 17, 18, 19, 21. It's just got that really polished jury, not jury bait, songs that juries appreciate. Just the artistry, professionalism, quality, cinematography, choreography, what would you song? Very good artist. There's nothing to fault. You can't mark anything here under seven out of 10. You know, the song is probably the weakest thing for me. It doesn't sound particularly innovative, but I think it's good enough. I would be very happy with this one. I think she's super deserving. It looks so great. And you can put this straight onto Malma. It's just gonna look great. And it's a pretty much guaranteed top 10. Um, and she's got a great slot as well. She's 11, so the producers believe in her. Okay, so that means closing the show, we have, we have another potential winner. It's Danny Saucedo singing, happy that you found me, one in a number secret bang. And I don't recognize the songwriters. So that's interesting. Beautiful beginning. These floor things, very Zelda Breath of the Wild. Extremely pretty. Solo light. That opening riff is super familiar. I don't know who it reminds me of. Beautiful slow pan though, down into him. Great anticipation built. We don't get to see him fully yet. I really like this song. I think it's really great, meaningless Swedish pop. I mean that in a good way, not in a bad way. Everything looking really slick and cool, this beautiful arch. We finally see Danny, quite a long way in actually, a minute in we see him for the first time. He's got great energy, I love the sway, building up the anticipation for the course. Getting into this very something. This kind of sounds like Marcus and Martinez's sound, but more mature. Or maybe a bit more dated, I'm not sure. It's a bop though. This is a bop. And he's got great energy in the chorus. I like how he's dancing. Voice sounding really good as well. And we switch now from oranges into these blues. And I love this like mystery Greek oracle beach side temple. Very cool. It's like a ballad with a dancey beat. <laughs> I love it. Full side of those a tiny bit off. He's stronger when he comes into the lower register. I'm now into the like, it's like a exploding flower club. He's got really great energy commitment for the whole song. He's selling the whole thing. He wants to be in Mama. Yeah, the song's kind of trashy, but I still like it. If you're gonna send a trashy song, make it sound like this. And the thing falls down. It's fun, the staging is vibrant, colorful. He's flying through the sky now. Just make him look a little bit like he's Jesus. And finishing off where we started with these gorgeous floor murals. And getting down to the floor, I like it. Yeah, and that light shining on from the side, really, really pretty. Giving us a beginning and an end. Yeah, look, I have to admit, I'm not, a, a massive, I'm really running out of light. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even like a massive Danny Sosetta fan. Like I don't give him a free pass and I really like this song. Like it's kind of trashy. The lyrics are a little bit meaningless. It's just fun to listen to. It's high energy. I like the rhythm. It's very easy to remember the chorus. He sells it to me. It looks like he's really into it. So I'm buying it. He's selling and I'm buying. Look, I'm not saying this is innovative or anything, but again, I think this is another solid entry from Sweden. Nothing this, this year can win. Absolutely. I'm so sure of that. I, I just really, 
think they would need so many other people to collapse for them to come in. I think top 10 is almost guaranteed unless they choose something really bad. For me, the standout ones are obviously Marcus and Martinez, I think have the coolest staging or like what the most people will think is cool staging. My favorite staging is Liamu. That's my personal favorite, but I'm biased because I love the song and I love that fantasy element. But I think most people will think Marcus and Martinez's staging is the best. I think Danny's in it as well. I think Jacqueline and I think Liamu. I think those are the four who realistically have a chance. And I think the producers are very much acknowledge that and they've given all of them a good running order in the competition and they're basically like whichever the four of you wins we're happy with any four and i think they would be happy with any four and i think largely most of them would have the same result we're looking at pretty good jury score not as good televote score i think maybe danny doing a little bit less strong with the jury because the song is a little bit more slightly trashy sounding, but then I think the televote will kind of make up for that a little bit. Sweden having such amazing options. I love this Melody Festival and Final. I have downloaded, I think, nine of these songs. I think it's really good quality. I love the music. None of it is gonna change my life or anything. I don't expect that from Melody Festival. Melody Festival Fest 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 is always the same generic pop, but it's still really good quality and well-performed. Great artists, sang well, really cool visuals. That's just what Melody Festival is. We aren't going to get a weird song like Gote winning Melody Festival and ever. It's just not going to happen. That's not what Swedish people want. They want songs in English. They want it to look slick. They want it to be catchy. They don't care if the lyrics mean nothing. That's just the market. They're doing very well with it. They're ranked number one in the last 10 years from every country in Eurovision. Why would they change basically the best formula in Eurovision in the last 10 years? It doesn't make any sense. They, they live in the top 10. Yeah, I think they're gonna be in the top 10 again this year, even though they were in the host, just proving that you can get a good result with the host. There's so many obvious good options. They're gonna pick one of those four, I'm quite sure. Let's have a quick look at the Eurovision scoreboard and see what people like before I go off. So in case you're wondering, this is my final top 12. You probably guessed. <laughs> <laughs> most of them to be honest let's have a look at the community and we can see currently the favorite is maria sore and second place is daughter third marcus uh, marcus Mercedes, and fourth place is jacqueline so three female artists on the top we do know that your vision scoreboard community tends to favor female artists that's new, not too surprising of the favorites though maria sore is in first marcus and martinez third jacqueline fourth liamu is in seventh and danny Saicedo in ninth so it would be interesting to see will the Eurovision scoreboard get it right will maria sir pull off an upset Okay, so that's, I gotta go because I'm really losing light and gonna start going into darkness soon. Um, what did you think about Melody Festival? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to Anonymous, Anonymous, Laura and Krumel for supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. And also thank you to Norka and Sean and Madeline for supporting me on PayPal. If you wanna support the channel, I'll have links to it in the description down below. I am a full-time content creator. And of course, thank you to all my patrons for patronizing me all over the world. On my Patreon, you can get the original audio and visuals when I get copyrighted. You can be part of our Mario Vision scoreboard group. You can get some early updates and you can get some early releases. So go check that out if you're a fan of the channel. But of course, thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.